Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron. I hope you're having a wonderful evening so far. And if you're not having a wonderful evening, that's okay. We're going to try to make things better around here. I hope everyone is well. I've been having a pretty good week myself so far. It's actually been quite nice. Not very stressful. Pretty chill. Pretty laid back. I was a little sick last weekend. Took a day off of work. Felt very rested. Completely changed around my sleep schedule a little bit. And I feel young and spry again. Oh! And thanks for pointing out, Astro, or Dom Star. I did get a haircut. The, the locks are all gone. I've been getting mixed messages from various people in my life. I think I look beautiful with short hair. Other people agree. Some people would not necessarily agree. There are key people in my life who, when I first cut my hair short, which is like, that's a, that's a whole thing there. The, when I say first time I cut my hair short, it was actually back in high school. I kept my hair long for a very, very, very long time. Um, like, it was like down to like, like this part of my back or whatever is very curly so it could go even longer if you straightened it out and i was i was quite as my as my high school director called it quite the beatnik which i took as a compliment at the time but now that i think about it i think is a hit on a certain group a demographic of people um but in any case this is short this is actually short for me in my opinion this is short hair at least for me comparatively to what it was in high school i actually first cut my hair like i took it from my ponytail all the way off uh, actually even shorter than this which was even short at the time it was like ungodly short um back in high school uh because the first uh, when i was i think it was my third year is that my third or second year it's my third year pretty sure might have been my second year of high school and my director was like we gave you the part in the play and we're gonna request that you put on a wig unless you want to cut your hair for it and i was like uh, I don't know. I've had my hair for a really long time. I'm taking a lot of work into it, but I was kind of hinching for a while because like it's a lot of product. It's 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 it gets a little knotted and whatnot. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get it cut off. Do I go to a barber or do I do it myself? I go to like the hair salon. There's a super cuts down the road that I go into. I think the last time I was at that location was like a year ago, and it was actually interesting. I walked in there and I was like, hi, I'm Cameron. Am I in the system? It's been a while. And they're like, yeah, yeah no, you're in, you're in the system. And I was like, oh, cool. Do it. Is the last person that I had still here? And they're like, no, I replaced them. And I was like, all right, let's see how things go. And it, it was awesome. My high hairstylist was an absolute joy to talk to. They were really, really awesome. Apparently they had wanted to be, want to be like a cosmetologist since they were like a kid. And I think that's an awesome thing when you like, when you're very, very young and you go up and you do exactly what you want to do. It was, it was great. Male or female? I believe they present as male. However, what they've got going on beneath is none of my business. But it was very, very cool. Was there, oh, are you talking about the barber? Uh, well, the person who cut my hair identified as a male, so I like that. Um, I think I know there are like men's salons. There's like female salon, like lady salons and men's salons around here. This is a normal place. I just kind of walked in, was like, I guess uh, there were a lot of pictures of people that I think are very manly on the wall. So they did a lot of manly haircuts and had a lot of manly products. However, there was a vast array of uh, different containers and whatnot that were colored a lot more colorfully, potentially flamboyantly, which I personally like those products, but I don't use a lot of products in my hair to begin with. But a uh, very, very nice, very, very nice person and a great conversation with them. And, uh, and honestly, they did my hair exactly what I want. Usually I go in and I'm like, I just want to leave about two inches. I think that'd be okay. Let me adjust my table here. Uh, and they were like, all right, cool, cool. And I'm like, but I like to do it layered in the back. Like the back of my hair is, I don't know if you could tell, but it's layered. I certainly don't, I, I certainly can't tell. I never see back there, but Anna's like, I like layered hair. And I was like, all right, I'll take your word for it. Uh, and it was great. And it's, a, it's a cheap haircut too. Eventually one day, I kind of want to do something a little more crazy, but I haven't really had the opportunity to yet. Um, so, and I also don't want to spend too much money on it. I, I gotta, I gotta admit, I, I try to be, I'm a little, I'm a little stingy sometimes when it comes to money. And so if I see something above a certain price range, I'm like, mm, but I know I can get that cheaper. And honestly, I, I sometimes do that for my haircuts. I, I skimp on my haircuts. Probably shouldn't be doing so. I don't skimp on the product though. That I don't do. You don't find many male hairstylists these days. That's true, yeah. I mean, I've never really, of the people that I've talked to that go to like a barber, and I've, I know at least one person who's like, I go to a barber that does men because they know men's hair. Like the facial hair, like front hair, chin hair, hair hair, hair hair. And I'm like, all right. I, I've never come to a point where I feel like I need somebody who like knows my particular like hair type for my my gender pre uh, presentation but like what I definitely want to try it like I'm the kind of person who wants to try anything at least once so if there is somebody who if somebody tells me you could get a better haircut at a male salon for a, a male salon a salon for males presenting as dudes I definitely want to try it 
But again, the whole like financial block is kind of in the way, at least for me. Ah, uh, our Dom needs an Asian hairstylist in order to get the hair right. Interesting. I wonder if that's got to do with um, a particular hairstylist you go to, or like, I know there are different hairstyles that are prevalent in different cultures. If I had to take a gander, I would say that my current hairstyle is, I suppose, European? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Maybe it's French. I don't know. I don't know what the whole thing going on in the front, wings along the side, a little a little shaved up the neckline. I don't really know what you call that, but uh, but it's nice, and I enjoy the way things look. And I appreciate the compliment there, too. I always, I am very present. I, I don't usually go out and get my hair cut because I'm kind of afraid of the barber. I'm like, ooh, I don't know if they're going to cut my hair right. They might shave all my hair off, and I don't like the sound of that. I don't like my hair getting shaved off. I was actually so afraid to go to the, the hair cuttery uh, when I was younger because when I had the long hair, I was like, they're just going to shave it all off, and I'm afraid. It was like one of my nightmares, and uh, I conquered my fears. And now we am... We am the man you see today. Speaking of today, today's cocktail is not actually a cocktail at all. It's a mocktail. It's the since I started doing this whole like separate like beginning stream warming up segment, I don't think I've actually done a mocktail on stream except for like I think I did like a morning stream one time and we did like a couple of them in re in recognition of like like a um I don't remember what was going on. It felt like it was holiday themed, but I really haven't done anything that's like non-alcoholic on here for a while. So I wanted to try something like that. So I looked through my books and tried to find, I was inspired actually. I have a bunch of new glasses that I you know, I want to show off eventually. So eventually I'll go, I'll get into that and I'll be able to use all of these different recipes and in such amount of glasses. I'd love to show them off at some point. Dom says that his hair is I guess kind of super similar to like the Asian hair type. So the current hairstylist is Asian and she was like, your hair is very Asian. So. Since then, she's been the perfect one. Interesting, for, an interesting night for sure. Oh, absolutely, absolutely indeed. I mean, I gotta say, if if like you walk into a hairstylist, right, and they say, I know what you got in mind, but I think I got something better for you, and you take a chance, and it's like exactly what you're looking for, then you're gonna try to make all these kind of connections. Like, what is it about my hair that this stereotyped hairstylist got right? Like, how do they how do they know me so well? Like. Honestly, I'd be trying to connect the dots too. I tried to think to myself, like, what is about what is it about my hairstylist that made them get my hair so right? And I was like, I don't know. I guess they're really good at their job. According to the, what the story they told me was that they got there and like within a couple months they had worked their way all the way up to manager. I was like, props to you. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's facial structure. It probably, I guess the. Yeah, I guess there are certain facial structures that are prevalent and prevalent in different ethnic groups. Indeed, indeed. I don't know what mine is. Somebody told me the other day that my face is chiseled. I have no idea what they're talking about. There is no marble structure here. Honestly, I don't have that much confidence in my physical appearance, but that's that's beside the point. I'm beautiful. You're beautiful. We're all beautiful. Let's make a mocktail. Today's mocktail that I have in mind is a mocktail called the Pom Pom. I'm pulling it from my 1,000 co on one cocktail books that I found on the side of the road uh, a hot minute ago, walking back from my car that I pulled in and was walking with Anna and I saw a solar power energy book and I saw this book and I was like, yoink! I think I might have taken a book. I think the other one was like solar power for dummies or something. But so, the reason why I wanted to do something non-alcohol, actually what I was looking for was something to use an egg in. Because I have a particular set of glasses that I got that I really wanted to see that foam separation that appears when you dry shake an egg white with your cocktail. And I really, really wanted to see that. And so this one happened to be touting an egg white and various other ingredients that I have. I usually don't do mocktails because I honestly don't have the ingredients for mocktails. They usually call for this type of juice and that type of fruit and this kind of thing. And unless I pre prepare ahead of time, which I'll admit I don't do as often as I should, I usually don't have the the, the recipe the, the ingredients for it. But this time I actually happen to have everything that I need already made, which is great. And I really didn't have to put too much effort into it. And that's always a plus. So this one's called pom pom. The description for pom com pom pom. <laughs> Pom pom, pomp and circumstance, is that lemonade transformed into an extravaganza that's pretty in pink with a frothy topping to match its frivolous name. I, I for one, I'll put this, put this picture up here. A little pom pom. This one right down by my pinky there. Can you see that? Do you see that? We're trying. There we go. Pom pom. It sounds, it sounds good. Indeed. It, it features a couple of different, I don't know. This book to me, because it touts so many different cocktails in quantity makes me think that there's something missing here and as i've gone through this book every once in a while i'll find things that just like they don't they don't they don't feel very classy or they don't feel very accurate and something about this particular recipe is a little inaccurate and as i go through the recipe what i'm going to do is i'm going to describe to you i'm going to say to you what this book says to do and then i might do something a little bit different 
or we just veer off in our own direction and see what happens because it says to do a couple of things and instructs you in a certain way but if you look at your reference if you look at the other context and whatnot it just it doesn't seem correct so we'll take the power in our own hands and change that this recipe calls for half a juice of a lemon a single egg white a single dash of grenadine crushed ice lemonade and a slice of a lemon and so the instructions call for this for such shake the lemon juice egg white and grenadine together and strain over crushed ice in a tall glass top up with lemonade and dress with a lemon slice on the rim of the glass now not to say that i am a professional in the matter i am not i am a novice but what i've been told is anytime that you shake a drink with an egg white in it you want to dry shake it first and then you can wet shake it afterwards technically i don't exactly know whether or not you have to wet shake it afterwards which is just adding ice to the thing and shaking the shit out of it but like if you do use if you want that sort of like frothy structure then you're gonna want to put you're gonna want to do a dry shake with it first you also need some sort of acid with it in this case we have lemon juice that makes total sense there but they don't say in the instructions that like you should specifically dry shake it now if i were more of a newbie than i am now i'd look at this and be like oh shake it well you shake things with ice so i'm gonna shake it with ice and i mean i don't exactly know if that you know i haven't tried it uh and i don't have a, i don't have enough ingredients to do two unfortunately and i used all the eggs for dinner so i only have two and if i mess up the first time i won't be able to do another one um but like i don't know if it affects it too much but i would think if you have like a, in a book like this which seems to like this would appeal to me as a as a young mixologist i was like this book appeals to me and i hope it walks me through every single thing that i'm supposed to learn and it doesn't it's not it the learning curve is a little steeper on that one dumb is learning so many things shake what your mama gave you and my mother gave me actually my mother gave me a little black book that i don't have in my line of view right now otherwise i'd put it up there my mother gave me what have my mother gave me in my collections i have a couple of glasses my mother gave me one of which is holding um a couple of my tools but it's got the tools in it so if i shake that it's gonna break things and it's gonna be a mess and i don't have to clean up the glass and I don't want to do that again right before a stream, but I will shake what I've got. And technically, what I've got is through my mother because she birthed me, and I appreciate her for that. So, that's one thing. That's one point that I found that, like, it doesn't explicitly say that you're supposed to dry shake it, and I wish it would. Random question. Hey, how would you make a really bad movie? The movie that I would make would be really bad is without sound. But no, 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 I take that back. There was an entire generation of movies that were done well without sound. I would put absolutely no effort into it. That's what I'd do. To make a really, really bad movie. Or, you know what? I'd fill it with tropes. I would fill it with... No, that would be entertaining too. That's a tough question. I would star myself in there. <laughs> that's what I would do. <laughs> um, no, that's, that doesn't really make a good movie. Uh, in any case, so... So, lemonade. One of the things that we need to make for this is some lemonade. I do not have any prepared lemonade, so the first thing I'm going to do... Technically, I guess we'll do two mocktail type things. I'm going to make some lemonade first, using an, uh, a recipe that... I'm just kind of coming up with off the top of my head. I, I'm, I'm gonna grab my lemonade container. This is my lemonade container. Anna tells me this is the container with which to create lemonade. I've never made lemonade in it before. It has no indication that it should be used for lemonade, except for, I don't know, there's a bunch of leaves on it. There's some hidden Mickeys in there somewhere. I appreciate that. Hello! Hello in there. Making lemonade? Oh yeah, we're making lemonade. And the, the ratio that I've decided, because the last time I made lemonade, it was like, it was like, uh, I, I did like equal parts lemon juice and water and then added just sugar until it tasted sweet, but it didn't actually taste sweet at all. So I'm gonna knock, I'm gonna, gonna take that proportion completely out of there. Instead, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do equal parts sugar and lemon juice as measured by an actual measuring container, which is the biggest measuring container I've used so far. And then I'll just kind of like fill it up with water until it tastes good. That's how I'm gonna do it. Let's, I don't know, I don't know. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some lemonade. I have sugar. I'm gonna grab my sugar. I'm gonna use, this looks like it holds, let's say two, maybe five cups, maybe six cups? Five, five to six cups it looks like this thing holds. So I'm gonna add a single cup of sugar and then I'll do a single cup of lemon juice. Oh, that's the wrong side. I need, a, I need the big boy side. I need the big boy spout. Don't use the small one. So this is an entire cup of this thing. It's a lot of sugar in there. And I'll use just as much lemonade as I need to to top to, to top off my cocktail. I um I think Anna might want some too. Anna loves lemonade. Whenever we have like extra citrus in the house, I try to like make some lemonade for her. I don't have a particular recipe. I just I just kind of do whatever whatever comes to me. Let's add a cup of sugar. Make some batch things here. Now come and think of it. This cocktail that I'm making here, 
if you like upped a bunch of the proportions you could probably make it into like a punch bowl thing too like you can you can give it to like your party guests and stuff like that and come to think of it easter's coming up real soon so like if you're a person who celebrates easter and you're looking for an easter kind of drink to make this mocktail might be for you potentially potentially so take that home with your friends now i'm gonna do an entire cup of lemon juice so what that means is i'm going to grab my cutting board a couple of lemons my squeezers and i'm just gonna go for it i'm just gonna try and see if i can cut up a bunch of lemons and get a couple lemon juice out i really hope that i can i hopefully can and uh, supposedly i've been told that if you kind of do this to your lemon kind of give it a little roll roll on the table a little bit you can get more juice out of it don't knock your glass containers over Ooh, Dom's got an answer to the random question. Dom says, I'd cast, he would cast himself as the MC for a relationship rom-com with Sandra Bullock, and we gotta travel through time to meet each other for the first time, but, let me just, I'm gonna look at the knife as I cut with it, so I don't cut my finger off. It's for safety purposes, I assure you. Sandra Bullock, uh, first time, but the time, time police are trying to kill your parents, so what, we ha what they have to do is save your parents from dying, and when she, but then she dies somehow. But through time bullshit, she's actually still alive, and then you live on Mars or somewhere in the future. I love the, like, sci-fi nature of this particular plot. I would totally watch it. I, um, I'm really bad with actors and actresses, so I can't quite recall, like, what Sandra Bullock has done before. Even though I knew what she did, probably don't remember what it was. Uh, and I probably never watched it, because I'm just bad at that stuff. But, however... I like the idea of a prominent female actress in a movie with somebody. And then I like, I admit, anytime I've watched a movie that deals with like time and stuff, I'm usually not very impressed. I would consider myself a rather scientific person. And being that time travel and whatnot is still kind of like theoretical per se. I just don't like the way that like the modern cinema does it. I don't really have a rhyme or reason behind it. I just like, whenever I see it done, I'm like, eh but like you could have chose something other than time travel despite the fact how cool time travel is i think i just watched i just watched a a, a movie the other day uh starring ryan reynolds called the adam project and i i genuinely enjoyed that movie essentially the premise is that there's this dude who's a time traveler and he travels back in time and tra and uh he he, he helps the young his younger self helps his older self to be able to accomplish some goal after the cra after your crash lands in the year, I think 2018 or something. Uh, and, and oh my goodness, I completely forgot to like pre-squeeze this lemon, but I think we'll be all right. Big agree, big agree. Was gonna say that's a good one though. Oh, Adam Project. I watched it when I came back from when I went tra uh, traveling to Charleston. I watched it on my plane ride back because I downloaded. Uh, I'm not gonna pay for any like like silly like in-plane Wi-Fi experience. Like I have Netflix on my phone. I'm gonna download it ahead of time, and I'm gonna watch whatever I dang well want without having to without having to play for anything extra. I'm uh, I'm frugal, or at least I attempt to be. Okay, I've squeezed about two lemons so far, and I got about half a cup. So we're just gonna just gonna keep on going. It's gonna keep on going. We um, need it seems about four lemons worth of lemon juice. I have them all in a little bag down here. I'll use this one. This is an ugly lemon. I have a very ugly lemon. It's a, I've been taking peels and whatnot from it, so that's what I'm going to use. The ugly lemon, the one that uh, I murdered for the sake of the cocktail that I made last week. And this one's already been pre-squeezed. I remember squeezing the heck out of it and be like, whenever, when I squeeze this next time, I'll have all the juice I could possibly desire. At least I choke so. Oh, it's got some weird moments. Yeah, the Adam Project, the Adam Project has some weird moments there are some weird moments i'll admit that was one of those movies that did time travel in such a way that i didn't have much of a problem with because they used enough bullshitty tie science terms for me to be like you know what i don't know what those means i don't know what those means so i'm just gonna agree with you and that's kind of like that's kind of how i got myself through the movie i was like i have like a problem with like sustaining suspending my disbelief for long enough to be like i'm enjoying this instead of Oh, I literally can't stop thinking about how this would never ever work. But then again, it's totally theoretical. But everybody's done it in different ways, and I don't like the way they did it. Like, da 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 da. Like, I have to turn off my internal brain because when I watch movies like that, like I was kind of that way when I watched what was it Endgame? Spoiler alert: time travel. It's a thing that happens. And so when I watched it, I was like, oh man, oh, they're doing time. Of course, they had to pull time travel into it. They couldn't do something interesting. But to be perfectly honest. I actually kind of found it pretty interesting. I like the way that way they went about it. Endgame has been out, or uh, uh, was it Endgame? Yeah, Endgame has been out for long enough, so I'm gonna pop some spoilers in here. Basically, 
Because of the fact that time works different on the quantum level, and because of the fact that a quantum universe exists according to the Ant-Man and Wasp movies, that means that if you go down at the time and do something, you go down and shrink your size really, really tiny, and you do something to do with a Mobius strip, then you can travel through time. And then travel back through time. And then Tony Stark did that, and then he died. Like, oh no, Mr. Stark, you're dead now. Sorry, Peter. We have to move on to the next generation of Marvel. You can't get what you want. Oh my gosh. Dom says he's pretty smart on science terms, and just kind of, they just kind of word vomit you. They do. They really do. When they do it right, it's good. It's totally good. Yeah, I know. I'll bet. They, um, I like to consider I like to consider myself a sciencey person, but to be honest, things go over my head. I can't I can't necessarily pay attention long enough for me to fact check things in real time as I'm watching the movie. So it gets a little Yeah, sometimes it's a little not as good as I wanna be on that. But you know what? You don't always have to be the smartest man in the room, despite what some power theorist people would tell you. You don't need to be. If it stresses you out, like it stresses me out sometimes, don't worry about it. Just don't worry. Just don't worry about it. I mean it's why your last name was Astro. Indeed, because science and the world around. I'll admit, when I was when I was a young lad, younger than I am now, I was enthused about science in general. The thing about the things about science that most amused me were things that were really, really big, the the celestial sized things that float in space, and then the smallest of things, as in like the smallest particles that you can think of, and the creatures that call microscopic areas their home. I was enthused about that. And I was like, man, if I could study anything, I would st study either the really, really big, the really, really large, or the really, really small. And so eventually what I wound up going down the path of was electronics. Electrons are very, very tiny. The quantum physics that define how, you know, valence bands forms and electromagnetic like radiation and blah, blah, blah. That was super duper interesting to me. And now I don't do that anymore because in order to do all the fun stuff, you have to like work in a research lab. And honestly, I wasn't... I wasn't about to do like research work for the rest of my life. I wanted to do something cool. So I went into firmware development because I really like playing around with microcontrollers. I apologize. I moved my thing over there because I realized uh, I'm blocking my I'm blocking myself with the maybe I should do it over here. Do it over here. First time I do stuff like this, so you know, I got to I got to make sure I got the right camera angles and try as best as I can to get the juice out of these lemons. I don't have a lot of upper arm strength, so I'm just trying my best here. This works though. This works indeed. Now, ask, uh, Dom says that they'd rather be the dumbest person in the room than the stuff about I don't even know anymore. Oh my God, the electrons. I will say, I love to talk about like technology in general and like science and stuff, but honestly don't usually have the opportunity to. And it's mostly because, it's mostly because, not because I don't feel comfortable talking about it, but like, I feel like if I do talk about it, there's somebody, gonna be somebody else that's just like, yeah, that's not the way that it is, but it's cool to talk about. That's like, I really, really like talking about like, theoretical things or things that are on the cutting edge because like the thing the really the, the the long and short of it is there's science there or there's science developing there and most of the discussion is opinions because your opinions and the way that you interpret certain systems and the ethics of it all goes into how you design it like there are entire positions now of people who are ethical algorithm consultants because there are some algorithms that people develop for like your machine learning and whatnot that like marginalize certain groups of people or miss like these things that should be alerted upon like like uh like for example you're driving your tesla down the road and it decides to hit the person instead of the shrub and you're like who designed this algorithm what were they thinking why didn't they think about this to begin with before they did that and knew like the anyway it's a whole it's a whole off things. It's crazy. It's totally crazy. And I mean, like, it's it's pretty meta, too. Um, one cup of lemon juice. I got it. That was about five lemons in with my one cup of sugar. And then I'm just gonna fill this up with water. And then I'm gonna do some shake. I'm gonna do some mixin', mixin', mixin'. Oh, it's kind of bubbling. You hear that bubbling? A little bubbling in there. I like that. I also changed. My setup changed a little bit. My voice may sound a little bit different got new microphones and now the microphone that you hear me from is right here instead of way down there so that's great those analysts have some crazy jobs it's true it's true and we can all hear the bubbling that's good i love that i like that i feel like now that i have things set up the way that i do i can whisper and i don't i'm not afraid of people not being able to hear me so really i don't to be perfectly honest i need to retrain myself for this because i don't need to speak that loud anymore 
and I have things set up a little bit better now. So if I get like really, really loud, I apologize. I literally cannot tell the sound of my own voice because I'm pretty sure I have some hearing loss potentially from all the concerts my father took me to as a child. And also I definitely have tinnitus, which may or may not affect the volume at which I hear myself to be. So now all I need is, I just need to fill this thing up with water as much as I can. Uh, luckily, we pre, we pre filtered a bunch of water at my water container. This is my water container. I am just going to, I'm gonna move my table back a little bit. Back, back, back table, back, back table. Hi, this is my whole table. This is my bar. I live in a small apartment. I don't have much space for anything else. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of, I'm gonna put this on the edge. And I'm just gonna like, just gonna fill this up. Yo, what's up? Consumption. I'm gonna consume the the sugary. I'm gonna consume the sugary lemon juice mess that is going to become lemonade. Cheers, folks. Oh my god, this is really sour. I don't like sour things. I'm not a sour. Oh my god, we got VIPs in here. Oops, you subscribed for almost. Oh my god, it's been a year. Oh my god, that's great. Let me fill up this water and I'll put on a party hat for you. Oh my god, it's been a year. Oh, golly gumptions. That's crazy. Um, by the way, I literally have no idea how many cups of water is going into here. So like, let's call it four or five. Four or five cups of water. There we go. That's probably good there. Please allow me to take my lemonade construction. I will. Push my table back and forward. There we go. Hopefully that's not too lopsided. Where my party hat at? Where my party hat at? Thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you greatly. The fact that... The fact that I am even able to say thank you for subscribing for a year... Is wild. I didn't think it... I didn't really think about that until now. That's crazy. Oh, golly. Now it's time for a sexy hat. And bits, we cheer things now. Actually, I've changed things up a bit. Actually, let me let me ask the opinion of the local community. Do bits warrant a party horn or a tune of the kazoo? This will decide things going forward. Your voice matters. This is the proof. I gave you both because I am unsure. I love it. Kazoo? Kazoo it is then. Uh... That's so American. I, I'm not that patriotic, to be perfectly honest. Uh, let's do This is a little ditty I call uh, XBB UK and British Petroleum in general. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, the roaring applause. I appreciate it. Uh, I've, I've always, I've always fantasized. I've always imagined fantasized. I've always imagined that one day I'll do something like that, and then somebody in, in the surrounding like apartment would be like, "Nice, nice consumption, consumption, fix myself." It tastes significantly better than it did before. That is an excellent lemonade recipe. One cup of sugar, one cup of water. No, one cup of sugar, one cup of lemon juice. It's like five lemons, and then just fill that shit up, and then give it a mix. I need my mixing thing. Excuse me. I'm gonna mix that while I fix myself. I gotta fix myself this time. Uh, I guess. I mean, you want, want some of this? Want some of that? Want some close-up action of the lemon juice? There we go. There. There's the top. Hi. We're closer now. I'm gonna mix this up. Mix it up as best as I can. That's what we get. You know, sometimes I think about... I, I feel like the wording of fix yourself feels a little on the nose, per se. Because when you think about it, fix myself. What does it mean to fix? It means to correct something that is broken or something that may need improvement. Now, to per be perfectly honest, I don't like to admit that everything around here needs improvement, although it very much does need improvements. But then, there's also the definition of fix of, like, you fix a dog or you fix a cat, like spay and or neuter them. Oh my goodness, consumption. It's good. It's getting better. Hmm. Oh, that's delightful. That lemonade tastes great. I can't wait to use it as a cocktail ingredient. Thank you for that. It was very pleasant. I like that. See, it's nice because with the consumption, I get to choose things that I enjoy. Anyway, I think I've completely mixed up my lemon juice. Eh, there's still a little bit of crystals in there, but it'll sit all to the bottom and do its thing eventually. Excuse me, I have to clear this reward queue or else I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget things. Thank you. I feel so close to you right now. That's a force field. 
Now, now that we have lemon juice, great. Crystals, what kind of crystals? Crystal meth, obviously, that's the obvious answer. Now that I have a single ingredient, this is the only ingredient that I had to prepare on stream, so I think we'll be okay. Only the legal kind. Consumption. This one's going straight in my mouth in the spout. That's good. I like that. You know what? I also, I'm going to give you a bonus consumption there. I haven't drank water in a hot minute. Nice. I like that. Back to the mocktail. Cocktail. It's a mocktail. That's how we do it around here. So this mocktail calls for basically three things in a glass. The juice of half a lemon, an egg white, and grenadine. Just kind of simple. A single dash of grenadine. That's the interesting thing. Oh, is that another consumption? I don't know. Did I miss that one? No, no, no. That's the same one from before. I got that. I got I to gotta count. I don't have mods that click the buttons for me. There are no mods around here. The mods are asleep, guys. Go nuts. I'm the mod. I never sleep. Ever. That's interesting, indeed. I need... Alright, so I need my cocktail shaker. I store things over here now, so I don't have to go halfway across the room to go grab that. I'm gonna grab, also, my double strainer here, because I'm using egg white, and we don't want that shit in there. Oh, is that another consumption? Mm, I think that's five so far. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna take a bite of a lemon this time. Make things interesting. Honestly, I totally understand how Lycos Lore does that. It's really not that bad. The Like, the lemon rind is honestly not that bad. It's totally cool. By the way, I'm practicing my cocktail trips, my, my bar tricks, so we're going to see if this works again. I'm going to take this, I'm going to hit it off my shoulder and catch it, he says, very expectantly. Throw that. Nice. Hopefully the more I do that, the more smooth it will become. So all I need in my glass is just the ingredients. If I'm dry shaking this thing, I just the only thing I have to worry about is just to be very careful with the egg white, uh, to which I have an apparatus for that. This thing. Nice. No more consumes! We had to nerf this. We know we plan for people. We have to plan for things. We don't plan for things. The system all breaks. Besides, it's a cocktail show. Wouldn't be much of a cocktail show if all I was doing was drinking all the time. You gotta make some cocktails. Oh, this is a mocktail. I wholly admit that. This is very, very true. So I wanna put an egg white in my glass. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack an egg and then I'm gonna use this little like yolk separator to cradle the oak right in the center and then let the whites and not really egg white, to be honest. It's more like egg clear, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and just let that drip down into the glass. So I'm gonna crack that, and I'm just gonna crack the egg. There are more complex ways of doing this, uh, things that are not so user-friendly. Uh, I like to do the user-friendly way because I, I don't like suffering. As much as, as much as I allow things to happen and make me suffer on this stream, I don't necessarily like it. Well, it is entertaining. I will say, sometimes you have to play the role of the fool. And the fool can sometimes make a fool of themselves. Well, and some... Excuse me. Wow, that was the lemon peel. That was crazy. Wow, I didn't realize lemon peels made you burp like that. That was incredible. I, I am both sorry and not sorry about that. I just learned something new here. I have to put this lemon stuff somewhere. So actually, I'm going to do... I have to clean this later, so I'm just going to use my measure... My measuring thing as my... As my gunk chamber. I'm going to clean... I'm going to put some of my eggshells in this. Excuse me one second. I'm down on the floor. I'm still here. Don't worry. Uh, I need to put all my lemon gunk in there because I have a lot of lemon carcass. Don't worry. I'll show you afterwards. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Gunk chamber. It's my gunk chamber. I'll show you my gunk chamber. Tee hee. And that's sexual. This is my gunk chamber. This is the gunk chamber I'm using. Look at all that gunk in there. That gunk in the spunk. Honestly, it's egg white. Who could tell the difference? I can't. I'm not so. I'm not. I'm not very good at that. So now that I have an egg white. Yep. That's an egg white, all right. Oh, Disney Queen resumed a cons consume. Oh, I'm not drinking egg white unless somebody makes me. I'll take another bite of a lemon because that was awesome. Gunk and spunk. I literally just said that. You're late. Gotta be quicker than that. I'm gonna be quick. As we all know, I'm very quick to the trigger. Not. Next thing I need is um the juice of half a lemon. So I need half a lemon. So I'm gonna. Grab my cutting board again. Let me eviscerate yet another lemon. Anna, I know you're here. I'm sorry. I've basically used almost all the lemons. But it's fine. You can buy more. I don't got enough points for that. Mm. Nice. I'm okay with that. I love the fact that that's an option now. It's great. They're ours, so... They are our lemons. This is true. 
These lemons don't belong to anybody. Although, as my fiance would often say, what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. Yours, in this case, being me, which means I own nothing. However, I did pay for a lot of it, so. I'll see you in court, dearest. Oh my goodness, what is that? We did it. I use my points. Do it. Do it. Note. I will preface this with the fact that you shouldn't do this often. It's not a good idea. I have done it before. This is not the first time I've consumed an egg. I'm not doing all of it, though. I will take a sip. What kind of notes are we getting on that? It's the texture. It's a texture thing. It's like... The texture is very odd, mostly. And I wouldn't say it's... I don't really think it's that that good. The light faded? Oh my god, perfectly. I wouldn't say it's a bad flavor. It doesn't really taste much like anything. Now, I think the real... One time... One time I went to Maryland with a couple of my fraternity brothers, and we went uh, we went sailing on the, uh, the waters of the Maryland River or something. I, I don't know. And so, um, we started the morning doing what lads do who are not driving the boat. Nobody was drunk driving the boat, only the people on the boat that were riding the boat. And we uh, we, we pre-gamed, naturally. And so I pre-gamed my morning with, um, we pre-gamed our morning with eggs and beer. We cracked an egg into a beer and chugged the thing. Now I, I was a smart lad. I don't like lagers, they bought lagers. So instead what I did is I bought an IPA, which is a very bitter drink. And I don't know what in me thought that that would be a good idea. It certainly wasn't my inner mixologist, certainly not. But I mixed an, I, I put an IPA, I put an egg in an IPA and attempted to chug that thing. I got it all down. That was unfortunate. I didn't like that. I was just about to donate 10 bucks for that. Rip. Oh my god. RIP. Money. Crazy. All right. Now I need just uh, half a juice of that lemon. Half a juice of that lemon. I definitely said that correctly. Oh my goodness. So we just get tax money returned. Yeah. IPA or Indian beers. Let me do, And let me say, India, uh, Indian pale ales. Are wonderful. I love IPAs. They need to stay away from my beer. Oh, I see. I see. I get that. I love. I love Indian pale. Uh, India pale ales. IPAs in general. Oh my goodness, that one squirted. Hello there. Sorry, madam. This is how it has to be. Oh, you were making a squeaky sound. Listen to the squish. I don't know whether that means they like it or not. That's a question for another day. That's a question for the offline streams. Subscribe to me on OnlyFans. I don't have an OnlyFans. I don't know. I don't know if there would be anything on that. <laughs> oh my god. IP or Indian beer? Yeah, and they need to stay away. Oh, you already said that. I, I read that already. I get lost sometimes. Ah, but like, yeah, they're stronger in alcohol percent. But I love the bitterness of it. It's very interesting to see what like a shit ton of hops can do to a drink, and it's variable. It, there's a lot of different variations in IPAs. I like it. Also, that was my first beer that I actually liked, because I didn't like, like, uh, like, Natty Lights and Lagers and stuff like that, but... Too bitter. Too bitter. I like the bitterness. I need a dash of grenadine now. I have juice of half a lemon, an egg white, and I need a dash of grenadine. I, like... I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know what the point of having a dash of this stuff is. Like, literally, so... Let me put this in perspective for you. Going back to my criticism of this drink. It has half an egg white in it which is like barely even an ounce, maybe? So it's, uh, then you put in a ha juice of half a lemon, which if we had to use five lemons for a cup, I don't remember what that conversion is, but it's not, it's not a lot. It's like maybe half an ounce perhaps? So let's just say you've got like an ounce of egg white, you've got a half about ounce of lemon juice, and then you add a dash of grenadine, which ideally shouldn't be more than like maybe an eighth of an ounce, maybe even a quarter. I'm going to add a little bit more because it's supposed to give it the pink color. But then the drink instructions literally tell you to fill it up with lemon juice. So basically, what the pom-pom cocktail is, is just, it's red, le it's pink lemonade. That's essentially all it is. It's just pink lemonade with like a hint of pomegranate and, and then froth on the top. By the way, it uses an egg white. It's not vegan. My apologies. If you came here looking for vegan stuff, you came to the wrong bar. I apologize for that. Not today, at least. Dom says he likes his Mexican beers. Yo! One of my favorite beers I've ever had of all time was a Mexican cake beer. And it tasted like cinnamon, and it tasted like caramel, and it tasted like chocolate, and it tasted... Oh my god, it was so good! I was down south, and I was at a tap bar, a tap house, and I ordered the most expensive beer on the menu accidentally, and it just so happened to be that, and I was like, Oh, it was so good. It was also really alcoholic, too. And then there's a brand that I can buy here in Philly called Sticky, and it tastes very, very similar. 
Oh my god, I love that. Ah, I love that so much. I haven't been able to find it at the distributor recently. I could probably get it ordered for myself, but it's just so much effort. Now that I have an ounce of egg white, half an ounce of lemon juice, and a dash, let's say about an eighth, an eighth of an ounce of grenadine, and that's like, what was it? Uh, whole egg white, one ounce is like 30 milliliters, half an ounce is gonna be at 15 milliliters, and then an eighth, like, I don't know, four? Four milliliters? It's crazy. I'm gonna dry shake this thing. Trying not to get egg white stuff anywhere. The dry shake does a thing. It allows the egg to emulsify with the power of the citric acid from the lemon. It's a little bit of cocktail science for you. Still working on my shaking technique. Oh my goodness. And watch out, there's a little pop. But the pressure is not, the pressure in a dry shake doesn't keep it together. It kind of tries to blow the thing apart. It's a little complicated, but it looks, that doesn't smell good. That tastes like, that tastes like eggy sour. And I don't like the, I, I don't like the sound of an eggy sour. That just feels weird. In any case, this is what I have. I was told to shake it. And now I'm inclined to dry, to, to wet shake it. If I dry shake it first, I'm gonna try to wet shake it afterwards. So I'm gonna go for my ice. I'm gonna fill it up. Astro don't say that he drank so much beer the other two days. It was crazy. Dude, how was Mexico? Oh my goodness. Dom Star over here is in Mexico. Partying. Partying all the time. At a wedding, I believe it was. Lovely time. Ann and I were actually just looking at, uh, we're looking more at wedding venues and whatnot. So as more details become available, I will obviously share. I actually had this awesome idea. I was like, yo. If I have questions about what we should do for our wedding, I should eventually, when the time gets a little closer, make like a, um, make a, uh, wedding channel in the Discord, and then we can- Oh, I slipped myself. Oh, that's unfortunate. I knew that was gonna happen. But then we can decide on things. We can chat about it. We can talk about our progress on the wedding, to share it with the world. I think it'd be so cute. It'd be so fun. Anyway, I didn't lose too much of that. I mean, actually, there wasn't much in there to begin with, so that's truly unfortunate. And now, I'm gonna wet shake it. So I'm gonna do it that way. Ideally, I should crush this ice up a little bit more, but honestly, I do not have that luxury right now. I just, I just didn't do it. I should have, but I didn't. Well, oh, look at you. Stop squealing. Yeah, there. Stop squealing like you do. Yep. Smells a little more like lemon now, less of egg. I appreciate that. I guess. Uh, okay. So the next thing I need to do, I need to vacate my table because this drink also calls for crushed ice. Yet another point of qualm that I have with this particular cocktail. So, when you do fancy things with egg whites, what you're gonna wind up doing is you're gonna make a really, really awesome, like, layering structure. Basically, you're gonna have, like, a layer of, like, foam up on top, and then the rest of the drink below it because of the way that the egg emulsifies and separates from the rest of the liquid. But, like, if you fill it up with, with crushed ice, then, like, you don't, I don't know if you get that, that separating effect anymore, so I, I really don't know. So I'm actually very curious to see if I'm still going to get that layering effect with crushed ice. I don't, I, I don't know, but I'm here to find out. So as per usual, I'm going to do that. Vacation time. Vacation time indeed. Oh, my ice is over here. Where did I just put my, oh, I put my ice on the floor. Nice. Nice ice. Nice ice baby. I'm going to grab a few ice cubes. Oh, it's been a while. So my ice cubes have kind of melted as they sat in my set in my uh cooler honestly i um i eventually need a better setup i should have a mini fridge i should have a mini fridge over here that i can keep like these things in but haven't quite optimized the setup yet we'll get there we'll get there one day also i'm stepping in puddles now because i put my ice very dumbly right below me um so that's something i'm gonna have to deal about a little bit later i'll do that the next thing i'm gonna do is make some crushed ice we've been through this i'm just gonna put them in a cheesecloth bag i'm gonna whack the shit out of it and uh, i'm gonna try to be careful with it because i should have I still haven't found my, my goggles. I am not, I'm not a shining example of safety over here. Just like, don't hit your hands. Look at what you're doing. Pay attention. Pay attention. Vacation time. I ask this all the time. Whack it. Whack it. I ask myself all the time. How do you crack ice? Well, this is how you do it. With a wrench. Whoa, okay. Apparently that side of the bag was open. Hey, you know what? It ain't a perfect show. We're all learning here. That's the best part about it. The best part is that we're all learning. Now, I think I have... Can I put something... Put this in something? No, that's all I got. All right, I guess I'll have to clean that up later. I got ice in my bar. Baby, whack this. Baby, whack it. 
Greenleaf. Bayleaf. Whack is pee pee. Am I a Pokemon now? Is that what this is? Have I devolved into a Pokemon battle? I am Bayleaf and I am now beating the shit out of like, I don't know, what's a Pokemon that looks vaguely like like a pee pee? Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking the first Pokemon that came to mind is the one that's got the, it's the little like a uh, rock that can spit out its guts. Pukyu Mewkyu, I think. I think that's the Pokemon's name. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put all these ice shards into my water, my water filter. That's what I'll do. That way I can get more water later. That's perfect. It doesn't matter if it looks weird. It'll be filtered. Thank you, um... Mm. Britta. I thought it was Britta, but I, Britta, but I was unsure. All right. Now that that's over and done with, let's take the cocktail glass. Now's the time that we get to we get to do the thing. So I'm gonna grab my yoga blocks. We don't have anything better to put things on yet. Slowly working on that. The yoga blocks, put it on there. I'll do a little zoom. This is one of my cocktail glasses that I bought over the weekend. Uh, we went uh, we went to a thrift store and bought a shit ton of cocktail glasses. It was pretty awesome. One of them's got a cactus on it, and I love that. I love cactuses. I had a cactus that I was trying to take care of for a while, but it didn't really work out. It's very pretty looking. It's a very pretty looking cocktail in a cocktail glass. I like that. Ooh, name your Brita something nice. Mabel. And she is beautiful. This is me and Mabel. She's beautiful. And she stores my dirty water and makes it clean. Thank you, Mabel. I appreciate you. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the crushed ice with the parts that didn't flop into Mabel and put it in my glass here. I'm gonna try to take as the small, like the smallest pieces I can, uh, not the big ones, because that's just kind of gotta, it's kind of ruin the ruin the shame here. I didn't really crush that ice very well. Here, come here, Mabel. I need you. I need to put the big ice pieces in you. Excuse me. I think Mabel is a beautiful name. It's in, if it's in dirty water, I don't think she's doing the job yet. Well, that's the thing. So, this water wasn't dirty. Never was. Never will be. But she's filtering out some of the particulates on the inside. That's what Mabel does. That's what Mabel likes to do. That's, that's why we bought Mabel. We, we bought, remember, Mabel is a, is an object. Mabel is a piece of, Mabel is an appliance that I bought from the store. Not a person. I did not buy a person. Let me make that perfectly clear. Mabel is not real. I don't know how comfortable I am with that thought right now. Let's put some crushed ice in there. Hopefully I do it correctly. Can I do this well from this angle? Let's see. Can I do it? Can I do it? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try doing it. I'm trying. Is that even working? I can't, can't really tell. Oh, that's kind of, oh. Mm. Slowly but surely. Very slow. Slow and steady wins the race. Come on, slow and steady wins the race. Yes, yes. Crushed ice. Oh my God, crushed ice. Come on, dude. Bro. Come on now. Have a little class. No, okay, I said slow and steady. That's what I get for rushing the process. All right, well, I'd say... There, there we go. I have to see this one. <laughs> I tried. I tried. That's crushed icy enough. Eventually, I think I can have... You can, uh, I can have a better crushed ice thing, but I don't have that, unfortunately. I'm not... I'm not so special over here. Anyway. Crushed ice. All the way to the top. Crushed ice. What? Maybe... Maple should work better. We buying people? We're purchasing appliances. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my dry, sh my, my now double shaken solution, and double strain that, because I don't want any particulates. Oh, where's my, where's my other strainer part? There you are, Ooh, my bar. Here we go, strain that over. I don't exactly know how much of this is gonna fill up, but we'll see. It's supposed to be pink. Wow, it filled up the entire glass. That was actually a lot more than I thought it was going to be. I guess I'm going to be ice melted. Eh, that's my bad. Anyway. I think it's alright. Not too bad. It's like, it's like pinkish. Absolute insanity. And then we top that off with lemon juice. Lemonade. Let's top it off with some lemonade. We made freshly on the show. Topped off with lemonade. Lemonade. Alright. That's been topped off with lemonade. It's supposed to be a lot more red than that. Which implies that I should have put much more than a single dash of grenadine in there. Now, let me ask you this. I have qualms. I have qualms with this recipe. Does does this look like this? Cause cause I don't think it does look like that, to be perfectly honest. I'm very disappointed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna garnish it. I'm gonna do exactly what I was told to do. 
and put it in. I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna make a little lemon peel and I'm going to put it on just as I was told to do by the recipe. Tempting not to, hold on, let me move this for a hot second just so I don't spill it everywhere. Excuse me, I gotta do this. <laughs> I gotta do this. Here, instead of watching the cocktail, watch me cut a lemon. Let's make a garnish. One slice, don't need that. Uh, two slice. Two slice. There we go. One slice, two slice. We did it. We did it. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming. Oh, I gotta put a little slit in there. E Yoink. There's a little slit. Appreciate that. Thank you. Now, here comes the drink pack again. Needs more red. Totally does. I agree with that completely. All right. Let's garnish our pom-poms. Pom pom. This is our pom pom. Pom pom pee dum pom pom pee dum tum. Anyway, it's I, I think it's it's not what the picture implied. If you add a dash of grenadine, it is not red. It is not as red as my party hat is. It's very unfortunate. I actually I imagine that it should be a perfect representation. It's really not. It's very unfortunate. I'm excited to see what it tastes like. Yeah, I'm excited to try to make this better. And then, but that's the thing. I want to make it red. I want to make it look like the picture. However, it might completely change the, the taste of it. Well, let's see what it tastes like so far. This was Pom Pom Mark 1. Pom Pom Mark 1 calls for a single egg white, half the juice of half of a lemon, and a dash of grenadine. I have a recipe for it. It's pomegranate based. And then you top it off with lemonade. I think I used a uh, sugar, sugar water lemon ratio of 151. Just about. Maybe 141. Let's see. Okay, I will say, very, very refreshing. I actually, I really, really do like the taste of that. It's, it's kind of, it accomplishes the goal of tasting like something other than its constituents. Like it doesn't quite just taste like lemonade. It tastes like, it tastes like sweet water. That's what it tastes like. It tastes like sweet water with a little something else going on. Now, if you gave this to me blindly, I could not tell you that there was grenadine in there. I would probably look at you and say, oh, pink lemonade? Hmm, I'm a fan of that. And it's actually very, very good. I, I think it's very, very tasty. And it's got no alcohol in it. This is a mocktail. There's no alcohol going on here. It's very, very tasty. It's, and to be honest, so another thing that an egg white kind of does for your cocktails is it can make it look cool. Really, there's no layering going on here. So I think because of the crushed ice, it kind of destroyed that whole layering effect there with the foam on top. There's, the bubbles and whatnot are never able to get its way to the top. Uh, it is a little bit of foam like on the edge here, but you really can't see that in this current lighting. Kind of unfortunate, but it's very, very pleasant. I will say the pom pom on its own, with actually just a dash of grenadine, it's not as red as the picture, but it's great. I really, really like that. But I couldn't tell you if I, if I, if you gave this to me blindly and told me guess what's in that, I'd be like, um, cherry, like a little bit of cherry juice, perhaps. I think straw. I thought strawberry, but I really don't get any strawberry notes on this. I think the pomegranate, but it, it, it doesn't taste like pomegranate to me. To be honest, it doesn't really taste like the grenadine recipe that I know, which tastes strong, like, which tastes very forwardly of pomegranate, a little bit of cherry in there, a little bit of orange blossom water, which is a bit astringent, and like red. It just tastes like red. It's the, it tastes like red lemonade. Oh, it's very pink. So this is what I want to do. I want to actually make it as red as the photo. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of deconstruct it very quite, very quickly. Just a little bit, take the garnish off of there. And I'm just gonna add grenadine until it matches the picture. Um, and for that, I'm gonna need my bar spoon and I'm gonna need to drink a little bit more of this. Let me, where's my phone at? I just wanna take a quick, a quick pick there. Cause I think it looks very, very, I, I really do like the way that this looks. Very nice looking. It's got a nice like pink sheen to it. I like that. That's beautiful. Thank you for letting me do that. I, I, thank you very much. So now I'm gonna drink enough of it to like give myself enough space to work with. So. Cheers! There's no worries here. I'm not gonna get drunk off of it. It's a mocktail and it tastes great. All right, I think I've got enough room to work with. So now I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna add grenadine until it looks as red as the picture. Where did I put my grenadine at? Oh, it's down here on the floor. Got it. All right. Let's add. Oh, actually, let's get a little bit closer now. Let's get back in there. Let's get back in there and watch the transformation. So right now, it's, um, all right, it's, I'd say it looks kind of yellowy from the camera. It's a little bit pinkish. 
with one dash. Let's put another dash in there. And I'm gonna say a dash is about, you know, let me put that out of the way. Yeet. That's about another dash. Let's give it a mix. All right. Definitely redder than it was before. It definitely, visually to me, looks more pink now, but it's kind of, from my angle, it's a little backlit by my stage lights. But it's pinkish. Actually, I'd say it's more orangey to me. I think it, it actually does kind of match my, kind of match my shirt a little bit. A little bit. So that's two dashes. It's not as red as the picture. Let's do three dashes. Maybe a little bit more. It's kind of starting to collect in the bottom, so I'm going to do a little, do a little shimmy down here to convince it to go to the top. My table is shaking, but don't worry. I won't knock things over. I promise. Promise, promise, promise. All right. Definitely more red than it was before. Still not super duper red. Now, the red that we had in that photo is another indication. The red in the photo is like, like, uh, it's really, really prominent. And you can see, like, this separation at the top. Which means there was some other stuff going on there. Just like I said, with the egg white, there's supposed to be, like, a foam that develops, like, a very thick foam. But you don't see that foam because there's ice in it. So my, that makes me think that the picture, the, the picture that was taken is actually not of this cocktail at all the way they, they describe it. it. But they actually took it with, without ice. So it's a little confusing. And this recipe does specifically call for um, crushed ice. Fill the glass with crushed, fill a tall glass with crushed ice. And like, I don't know, it's a little misleading. But that was, I think we're on dash number four now. It's starting to get red. Certainly not as red as the, as the, as the, the book would imply it to be. Now, for comparison, this is as red as my Gretadine is. Excuse me, it's very, very dark. So it can get very dark. But how many dashes does it take? Let's do dash number five, I think we're on. And these are some heavy dashes, because uh, I don't have a dasher. It's definitely more red. I'm just gonna continue this process. I'm gonna do it a little bit more quickly now. Let's try six. Six dashes of Grenadine. Do a little, do a little shimmy at the bottom shake. Shimmy little bottom shake. I'm using the butt end of my glass because I think it's easier to get to the bottom there. The, the thing would be a little bit different. All right, it's more red. Almost as red? I'd say two more dashes, so I'm gonna do two more. Uh, whatever two more from the previous number I said was. Yeah, that's the total. I'd say that's about 10 dashes of grenadine to make this thing as red as the photo. Which, to be perfectly honest, it's not going to be entirely accurate because there's a bunch of crushed ice in there, which changes the color a little bit. It gives this really cool, like, dark gradient at the bottom where the grenadine is collecting. And then you have all the stuff at the top, which is a little bit bubbly. There's more crushed ice up there. It's probably melting and watering down a little bit, but that's okay. It's all for aesthetics now. I think that is probably as close as I'm going to get to the picture. And that was about an entire, like, ten dashes of grenadine. I'd say, actually, it might even be a little too dark, to be honest. Well, it depends on the angle at which I shine in the light. Not that bad. Honestly, let's say we did it. I think it's as red as the ingredient, the thing calls for. So now, boop. There it is. That's Pom Pom Mark II. Redder than before. What does it taste like now? To be honest, it's probably just gonna taste like grenadine, if not anything else at all. All right, sour grenadine. That's it. It kind of tastes like uh oh, fix it, fix it. This party head's getting on my nerves. I'll put it right up on top. There we go. Now I look like a dunce. It's not really. It's not. I don't have as much hair as I did previously, so it's not like adhering the way that I like it to. But it's a. Uh, it tastes like grenadine. My particular grenadine recipe kind of tastes a little, it's like a little off pomegranate. It's not as like, like sour forward as like pomegranate juice, uh, the way that you would get it from like, I don't know, Palm Wonderful. I mean, I did make this with Palm Wonderful and po uh, pomegranate molasses. But it kind of just tastes like watered down grenadine. Imagine, imagine for a moment that you went to your local restaurant and you were like, I will have a Shirley Temple. And they put grenadine, or red syrup and combine it with like ginger ale. If you take out the ginger ale, it kind of tastes like that. If you take out the ginger ale but leave the ice, which still has a little bit of that ginger ale flavor, 
that's what this tastes like it's a little more sweet than before now if the person you're mixing this up for is really 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 into sweet stuff probably gonna love it they're probably gonna be totally up their alley and so if that's the case if that's who you're mixing for give them a red one give them a totally red one but if you're looking for somebody with something at the mixing for somebody that's a little more like toward the subtle end somebody who appreciates a more subtle drink then honestly i would go for i would say this would benefit from like not one dash but like two or three dashes with the particular measurements that they've got here that or you could just like mix it in a punch bowl make a shit ton of lemonade like this make a shit ton of lemonade put it in a punch bowl uh and add like add like uh i wouldn't add the eggs directly what i would do is i would mix it in parts so i'd do like two egg whites um like let's just say like uh, an ounce of grenadine and then let's put a few lemons in there shake that up and then pour that into your lemonade and you'll probably be good and then add more grenadine for color until it matches what you're looking for that's that's probably if i were to make a punch version of that that's probably what i would do here but honestly not so bad not terrible at all i'm gonna take my obligatory picture i'd spend a little more time on it but i'm doing a little bit of traveling so i gotta take them now take them now it's actually not as red as i want it to be but you know what i will take it i'll take it a different angle i'm okay with that anyway that's what we got going on here thank you for coming to the bar it was uh we had a mocktail this time around i'm actually really happy i was able to do that i oftentimes think to myself that like i do too much like alcohol related content on here and that's not really the point the point is for the the, the, par uh, the party that we're trying to go for is a party for all ages some t there's a corner of the room where you can talk trash there's a corner of the room where you can drink your alcohol there's a corner of the room for the kids and everything like that at least that's the intent around here that's why you have tired of party hats too you can even put a party hat on your baby if you wanted to although i would watch out baby bees have very sensitive skin and they got a little dot in their head so just make sure you put the party hat on upright that's all the advice I could give on you. But honestly, you're probably a great parent on your own if you're a parent. So keep on doing what you're doing. I don't think there is a right answer. And if there is one, somebody better teach me before I have a child. Because it's it's like a few years from now and it's coming up close. In any case, thank you all very much. The recipe that we covered today was Pom Pom, a mocktail from my Thousand and One Cocktails book by Paragon Publishing. Um... I'll post the recipes in the uh, I'll post the recipes in the uh, the VOD and probably on Insta I'll put them on Instagram and whatnot if you missed it. Uh, I encourage people to take photos. To, to, like if, if you want to share this, the best thing that you can do is either copy the text or take a screenshot and just send that off. I try to make that easier. Um, if if my name's in it, cool. If not, whatever. Let the let the good times roll. Shake what your mama gave you. That's all I can ask for. Thank you everybody so much for coming along. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch myself over to the other side of my desk to play a bit of Graveyard Keeper tonight, get a little game in there. Technically this was the warm-up session. And I spent a little bit of time on that. It's because I was having fun. I hope everyone was having fun as well. It should be a quicker transition than usual. I have a completely, I have to change up my microphone setup so there's less work involved. So let's see how fast I can do that. We'll, we'll see. If that, that being the case, if you're joining me again, thanks so much. I'll see you all on the other side. If not, have a wonderful rest of your night your evening if it's the evening where you are no matter where you are your time zone matters not continue partying continue being the beautiful person that i'm sure you are if you're not you're getting there I promise see you on the on the other side bye y'all oh my god for straight up silver oh but i can sell this for 75 yo oh we've unlocked it this is how to do it this is how this is how you become arist an aristocrat you sell precious metals and gems. Oh my god. I'm getting almost two gold for this whole order. I've cracked it.